Hey everybody, this is Blue. Well, I wanted to talk about the ranger profession. And real master, we call them professions, not classes. Okay? And so, when I, all those months ago, was starting to get more and more into TTRPG uh, YouTube videos, I was seeing a lot of people complaining about the ranger. In fact, I see just a lot of people complaining about every aspect of D&D. This profession sucks, that profession sucks. This race sucks, that race sucks. Feet suck, that sucks. Everything sucks, sucks. Old McDonald had a farm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. I'm trying to have a little bit of sense of humor here. And so a lot of this falls into two categories. Um, the first one is that the players and the GM are wanting Mary Sue's and that's just got to stop. What am I mean by Mary Sue's? Well, a lot of the complaints that I'm hearing is people going, you know, the Ranger sucks because the fighter is better with in combat. The Ranger sucks because the wizard is better at magic. The Ranger sucks because of the rogue and whatever. You have this desire to, for this profession to be a Mary Sue. It can't be. The Ranger is a skilled profession and his skills are in nature. And so if you want somebody that can, you know, stalk and hide and go and hunt, you know, that's got to come from somewhere. You know, it takes time to develop these skills, right? Well, if he is developing his ability to hunt, well, then something else is not getting attention. So, expecting the ranger to be on par with all these other professions, classes, subclasses, and all that is unrealistic, honestly. I know it's a fantasy game, but certain things got to make some sense. And to expect a profession to be a Mary Sue is just wanting bad game to balance. Because um, if you have the Ranger, you know, on par with all these other professions, then everybody's going to want to be a Ranger because, you know, hey, he can hunt, he can do good in combat, he casts all these spells, this, that, and everything. Well, then, you know, it kind of takes away from all the other professions. The Ranger is unique because it is a skilled profession, which leads to the other reason why the Ranger is so bad for D&D &D and better in Rollmaster. D&D &D has a very shallow, vague concept of skills. They throw in these feats that make absolutely no sense. And so you end up with this profession class that is held back because D&D &D and all its clones are restrictive. Yes, you can have a favorite foe, but you can only go after these foes. All right. You can have a favored um, environment, but Outside that environment, he's pretty much worthless. And so because of that, there's too many limitations on the ranger. Um, the bow. They put these feats in there um, so that your ranger can be proficient in a bow. Rollmaster doesn't have that. You just buy your skills to improve your ability to fire a bow. So we don't have to do these feats. We don't do that stuff. We just take our development points and buy more skill ranks. We can easily advance our PC in being able to shoot a bow. The thing I love about Rollmaster is the flexibility, which is something that D&D &D doesn't have. Your ranger can develop 
at multiple weapon skills at the same time in Rollmaster. My favorite ranger, good old Victor, he was good with a broadsword, a longsword, a longbow, and he always had two daggers on his belt. So, I mean, he can use his longbow for ranged attacks, and then if when he gets into um, melee, he's got his broadsword, and if things go bad, you know, if he fumbles his weapons, he can pull his daggers out the back, and he can use his daggers in melee to block, you know, to protect himself. And also, he had the skill to throw them, so if he ran out of arrows, he could pull a dagger and throw it at whatever to do more damage. D&D &D seems to want to put so many restrictions on it. And so that's why D&D &D can't run skilled professions like a ranger. D&D &D is unfortunately designed where you have a tank and, you know, there, here's these little things that make him a good tank. You also have D&D &D where, you know, it's great for your wizards, your magic users, because they got the rules set up for that. But for somebody that is a semi-spell user, they suck because there is no well-defined skill system and magic system that can works good for the semi-spell user. Um... And so, let me. Now, a lot more people have adjusted to try to adjust this. It's not just D and D. Um, this is uh, from a blog of a guy working with the Rollmaster Unified, which is the new system of Rollmaster that they're coming out pretty soon. And. I think this guy is a bad example, but I wanted to use it. I confess I never really liked the Ranger and Rollmaster. It's not that I dislike the archetype. Who wouldn't want to be Robin Hood, Legolas, or whoever? The problem lies in the implementation. In Rollmaster 2, it's a version I play, Ranger had a great set of utility spells to help with stalking and hiding, movement, survival in the wilderness, etc. Which is true. But very little that buffed him in combat. Indeed, a fighter was better than a ranger with a bow. A warrior, a fighter, is trained to kill with the bow. He is meant to survive and combat situations again if you want a fighter then just do a fighter if you want somebody that can be skilled that can hunt fish and all that and provide for the group a ranger is better sacrifices have to be made all right um shouldn't robin hood be better with a bow than lancelot also, many of the ranger's spells were so duplicated in stronger or weaker versions on the open and closed challenge list, which is true. So there wasn't very much that was unique, nor is Rollmaster alone in having an underwhelming ranger. D&D &D has missed the mark sometimes too. While the 4E version of the Ranger was strong, the 5E version has been one of the most severely criticized aspects of e 5E. The Wizards have tried several times to use supplement materials to fix the class. Um, opinion on it is still quite mixed. How can we say it? How can we revive the Ranger? I would say the key is at adding and modifying the Ranger base spell list, which is true. These are easy to, to distinguish than other aspects of the class because in Rollmaster, other classes can buy the same weapon skills and wilderness skills and even ambush too. The spells, though, are unique. That also depends what system you use. Okay. 
So let's go start tearing apart the Ranger. And there we go. All right, so what is a Ranger? And according to good old Rollmaster and their character law, Rangers are semi-spell users who combined the realms of channeling with the realm of arms. Their base spells deal with operating in the outdoors and manipulating the elements of weather. Prime requisites are intuition and constitution. Now, if you are so darn determined to have the bow and all that, I would replace self-discipline Wait, wait, no, constitution with agility because agility would also help in some of their like subterfuge skills, but agility is more important in using the boat. All right, now uh, the next thing is level bonuses now rollmaster uses a level bonus system so which is to represent how certain professions are better at certain categories compared to others so um going by the higher bonus the highest is three which will show that this profession is more proficient at these skills compared to others so in academics, the ranger only gets a plus one. Athletics, they get a plus two. Now, this would be your running, swimming, uh, body development, which is important. Body development is how you determine hits. Animal plant skills. Because they are out in nature, they are hunters and guides and all that. They know this area, that area very well. They get a plus three level bonus. General. Now this is your crafting and cooking and that. And so, well, not as much crafting, I'm sorry. General is your cooking and your kind of everyday skills. They'll get a plus two. Combat. A warrior, a fighter, will get a plus three. A ranger gets a plus two. So, I mean, they can fight, but again, they're not fighters. So, they only get a plus two. Perception, your, their ability to detect. Remember, these are supposed to be uh, people that work out in nature, and so they are supposed to be good with seeing the animals, detecting animals, reading tracks, and all that. So, their perception has to be good. They got a plus two. <laughs> Magic, while important, is not the, their primary thing. And so they will only get a plus one bonus when it comes to magic. And the last one is subterfuge. This is your stocking, hiding, um, ability to build traps and such. And so they get a plus two. Now, my description of this profession is a semi-spell user that works in nature, uh, mostly force, works as a scout, a guide, a hunter, and is a defender of the forests. Uh, recently, I watched a video and somebody, I wish I could remember who so I can get proper credit, but they said that the ranger and the druid are similar but opposites. That the druid protects nature from civilization, but a ranger protects a civilization from nature. I thought that was very cool. Now, they're talking about adding on their base spells, and that's what I did. Now, in standard role master, they only got six base lists. And in mine, they got 10. Let's see, how one, two, three. yeah, they got 10 base lists to choose from. And so this will get show them greater flex, flexibility 
and give them the skills and with a little magic you know incentive bonuses to do other things so i want to go through their spells uh now because you know this is going to show a great deal about them okay first spell list for a ranger is inner walls this is about their resistance this is their ability to withstand and this is their protection this is against the elements um, because I'm just going to name off the spells. Uh, level 1 is heat resistance. Level 2 is cold resistance. Level 3 is labeled resistance, but that basically is a plus 5 to your resistance rules. Uh, number 4 is bless. Number 1. Number 5 is prayer 1. Number 7 is sterilization. Number 8 is resistance 2. Now, the nice thing about Role Master is they have spells, same name, but different level power levels. Because in here you got a Bless 1, a Bless 2, a Bless 3, a Bless 4. So, I mean, this shows you with the, your progression of power in higher ranks, the bonus you get for your resistance rolls is also better. Okay. Um... So let's see, let's do 11, it's protection from the elements. Um, they even have, because this is a channeling profession, they got at level 25, purge, curse. 30, purge, poison. And 50 is inner wall. And that one is the caster gets a plus 25 to his defensive bonus resistance rules and maneuver rules and so that really is going to help that profession out that character out um, number two the second spell list is moving ways this is obviously about movement so you have rock running so th um, this one um, the caster can run on any nearly horizontal rocky and earthen surfaces as if it was level ground he will expend exhaustion points as if he were walking okay then you've got limb walking swimming water walking sand running which is nice because with sand running which is a number five spell Caster can run on sandy surfaces as if he was on level ground. And then the exhaustion points the same as, as if walking. Um, then number six is limb running. Number seven is traceless passing. Number eight is hide tracks number nine is water running so you can actually run across water you can be basically jesus at a higher speed uh, number 10 is hide tracks true two then you got they're starting to repeat but at a higher level swimming true hide tracks five running true traceless passing true um True just means at a higher level. That's one of the little weird things with Rollmaster. Hide tracks, traceless running, um, just repeating up at, at higher levels. So there you go to help on your movie. Just one second. Nature's Guises. This is about hiding. You know, camouflaging and a little bit more. Um, number one is hues. Allows the caster to take on a physical coloration of any one organic object nearby. The caster must be in contact with the object when the spell is cast. So he can lay in the grass, cast a spell, and he would blend in very well with the grass. Shade. 
uh, uh, this is number two, all shadows in the area um, of the effect deepen, all hiding maneuvers gain a plus 25 bonus for stalking and hiding maneuvers. Cool. Number three is freeze. Number four is silent moves. Number one, so I mean, number five is self cloaking. This uh, caster blends into the surrounding terrain. This results in a plus 75 bonus in hiding attempts. Number six, light um, lights a 10 foot radius area surrounding the point touched. Uh, darkness is basically just the opposite, it throws a 10 foot radius area surrounding the point touched um, into normal darkness. Number eight is shadow. The caster and objects on his person appear to be a shadow and thus are almost invisible in dark areas. So you can combine these spells and your ranger can hide very well, but it gets better. Number nine is study form. Caster studies and memorizes the form of one type of animal or plant to use with spells later on in the list. The caster can only have as many forms studied as his level, which basically means if this is like a level 13 character, he can have 13 studied plants and or animals. Number 10 is Plant Facade, uh, allows Caster to appear as any one type of plant that he has studied. Okay. Number 11 is Animal Thoughts. For the duration of the spell, the Caster's mental patterns will appear uh, to be those of any animal that he has studied. The Caster cannot move while this spell is active. And the nice thing, some of these spells are concentration. Um, some of them, you know, you just can't move. But half the spells on this list, you know, they are, the duration is 10 minutes per level. Again, if you're a level 13, what ranger, that means you got 130 minutes. Two hours of being able to hide yourself. All right, uh, study true form. Um, as study form, except the specific animal or plant um, form may be studied. For example, the woodsman's dog, as opposed to just a dog. So you can get into more specific, which could help you infiltrate into areas. Animal thoughts true. As animal thoughts, except Caster can move, so which will help. Plant form one allows Caster to take the form of any one plant he has studied. Take the form of, which means if he studies a tree, he could appear to be a tree. Number 18, animal form one allows the caster to take a form of any one animal that he has studied. The caster will look and feel like the animal. He can vary his size from 75% of normal to 200% of normal. Um, this means that he can't study a hamster and become a hamster. Okay, He has to come up with something roughly within his size. So if he weighed 200 pounds, he could go into something that weighs between 150 pounds to 400 pounds. Uh, number 20 is plant form two. Um, as platform one, except caster may also assume the scent and physical abilities of the plant, which is pretty cool. Uh, 25 is Animal Form 2. As Animal Form 1 except Caster gains the movement abilities of the chosen animal, Caster can also now go from one that's 50% the normal to 400 times the normal. Um, and then 
more on the plant and animal at just higher levels. So, animal forms. Okay, they have that wild shape. There it is. And it has, you know, nice limit. It has set de limitations, which help it out a great deal. Oh, one of my favorite lists here because it, it's just kind of weird in a way. Nature summons. It's not just. It's it's weird. Uh, number one is summon nourishment. An animal will arrive bearing some form of nourishment for the caster. This may take the form of berries, nuts, or tubers. Always some form of vegetable matter. The animal will drop the food off and return to the wilderness. So if you get hungry and you're desperate, you cast a spell and you might have an, an animal. You could even have up to like a bear bringing you um, some. So I thought that was always cool. Um, number two, summon warmth. A heavy furred animal will arrive and lie down next to the caster. The animal will allow the caster and only the caster to lie down next to it. So if a storm comes and it's cold, you can summon a grizzly bear. The grizzly bear will lay right next to you and keep it warm and safe because nobody's going to screw with a grizzly bear, right? Uh, summon guide as an animal who knows the path to a specific location will arrive and guide the caster to the location. So, great way, to, you know, you can get a bird and just follow the bird. Summon guardian, a suitable large animal will arrive. The animal will attempt to protect the caster from hostile attacks for the duration of the spell. You can summon a mount. You can summon a hunter. So, again, you can summon a grizzly bear and have the grizzly bear kill something for you. Uh, summon sense. An animal with a specific heightened sense will arrive for the duration of the spell. The animal will perceive for the caster. Okay. Summon group. A group of animals will arrive and stay near the area where the spell was cast. For the purposes of this spell, the animal summoned must normally travel in groups. You know, wolves, deer, birds, etc. Uh, then you got your mass summons. Spread of plants where you can uh, get more plants growing in an area. A magic grow, basically. Fog prayer, so you can call fog. There's um, a rain prayer, a storm prayer. Hail prayer, lightning prayer, tornado prayer. Um, that is just some of the amazing spells on this list. And this is just one list. So this one list gives the ranger a great deal of abilities down, doesn't it? Uh, nature's way. This is trap detection, water finding, fire starting, food finding, so in case you don't want the animals to find it, you have a spell that will help you find it. Water purification, shelter finding, lesser traps. This spell creates a minor normal trap. Okay. Weather prediction, nature's awareness, water finding, food finding, more advanced levels, which I again like. Um, the final spell on the standard role master system for the ranger is path mastery. Um, so you can do path lore, so you can learn uh, the origin and nearest destination of any path within the area of effect. So if you're lost in the woods, there you go. Night vision, um, there's a tracking spell. Path Tail. Uh, that one, Caster acquires visual image of any user of a given path up to one hour in the path, in the past per level of the caster. So you can see who's been walking on that path. So if you're trying to find somebody and you wonder if he was on that path, you cast this spell and if it's within a certain duration, you'll know.
and level seven is a detect ambush so then you'd be aware of any being within the area of effect that has a hostile intention towards the PC. And then you got passing lore, pathfinding, animal tongues, allows the caster to understand and speak the language of any one animal species. Wow. Uh, plant tongues, you can, so you can speak to plants. Stone speech allows you to understand and speak the language of any stone so you can get its history, recent history. Um, and then the rest are advanced, you know, higher levels of detecting ambush and all that. So right there, there's some excellent spells that a person can use. But they were talking about how you can add to it, and I did. Um, next spell list that I added was Survival Waste. Now this is a Druid based list, but I thought that it would be good for the Ranger as well. You have Float, Sink, Support Weight, uh, Test, Reflect, Temperature Control, Condensation, Climb, Navigation, Repellent, um, the repellent uh, caster creates a field of energy scent etc which repels one type of creature such as if you're in water a shark insects alligators bears whatever dehydrate um, caster removes the water from up to one cubic foot of food per caster levels so that's pretty cool. Visual protection, environmental vision, water walk, uh, breathe underwater. You can melt. So again, this is, you know, another good spell list. And each one that you add just makes your character so much better. And the last one I added was more specific. While we did have some, you know, weather-oriented spells in the other lists, this one is an open channeling weather waste. Um, and so you can live engaged. Caster can ascertain information from the surrounding atmosphere. Information that may be gained includes temperature, humidity, barometric pressure, and wind speed. The caster can gain a different place of information each round. So you can find out what your weather is like here, and then where you're wanting to go. Is it warmer, colder, if they have in the storm? Then you got rain predictions, storm prediction, weather prediction, you can call a breeze, so if you need to um, get your scent away, you can actually call a breeze that will kind of keep your scent going the opposite area. So if you don't want an animal to smell you that you know of, you can have the wind go the other way. Fog call. Well, if you're trying to hide, there you go. Uh, perception, per, precipitation call. Wind mastery, you can clear the skies, weather prediction, you can call rain, you can call a storm, and weather mastery. Um, and so there is a lot of great ways to improve the ranger, but I'm going to get back to what I was saying. We have a little bit too of a problem of people wanting the Mary Sue. The ranger is not a Mary Sue. It is a good, versatile profession that can do many things, but there's too many people that want to be the best at it all, and that's not going to happen. Um, now, as I've told people, that I have 301 skills in my um, homebrew. And so, you remember I was telling you about level bonuses. 
you know, like the subterfuge and that. Well, those are the professions that the ranger has lower costs compared to other professions. In the standard role master system, they have a 2-5 cost on skills. This is the everyday skill cost. What that means is when you are doing your level advancements or character creation, the first skill rank for that level will cost you two. And then a second skill rank will cost you five development points for a total of seven. So, um, let me get to, there we go. We'll do perception here. You know, perception is very important for the Rangers because they are, their mission is to see everything before they see him. So they're good at detecting traps. That's a one, three cost. One development point for the first skill rank, three for the second. Same for uh, locate secret entry. They have ambush sense. There are two, three on that one. Tracking. Now, that is something that the ranger should be awesome at, right? Well, in my homebrew, they can gain up to three skill ranks on things that they are supposed to be proficient in. So in this case, for tracking, a ranger would spend eight points, but they would get three skill ranks because it's two, three, three. You have alertness, direction sense. Again, this is something that the ranger should be absolutely awesome in. And so that's a two, two, three. Location sense. Again, this is something that they should be good at. Surveillance. Awesome. Smell, taste. Maybe they're not so good at this. It's a three, five. You know, first one's three, second skill rank is five. General perception. Now, this is something that they ought to be really good at. Two, two, three. Rating tracks, again, two, two, three. Their time sense is a two, five, and hearing is a two, five as well. Now, that's something that they should be good at, right? So let's go look at magic, you know, because that's not their specialty. And so for learning Directed spells, it's a 2-5. It's every day. They're not awesome in it. They're not very good at ritual magic, so it's a 4-5. PowerPoint development. Again, this is not something that they're going to spend a lot of time with. And so, again, it's a 4-5. Now, as I was saying, you know, in the perception, they are proficient in this. And so there are skills where they can learn up to three ranks per level, right? Well, there are some things that they are going to be terrible at. A ranger is not good at banishment or alchemy, exorcism, using sigils, circle magic, scrying, and enchanting, right? So their base on that is five. Once they can only get one skill rank, it's going to cost them five development points to do it. And so that is the basic rundown on the Ranger. It is better than what people think it is because a lot of people are trying to use it wrong. It is not a Mary Sue profession. It is a highly skilled profession and it can only be ran good in gaming systems that use a lot of skills. Role Master is a skilled based TTRPG uh, because you are able to say what you're specifically doing and you can find a skill for it. Where with D&D &D and all of its clones, it's vague. It's very general. You have perception, but, you know, there is nothing that says you're really this good, this perfect form of perception and so maybe a lot of you are just playing the wrong game because it sounds like you want something that 
has the ability to be flexible. And a ranger in Rollmaster can be flexible. It can learn multiple weapons. So it can learn how to use the broadsword along with a longbow. It's not one or the others. It could be both. It could be multiple weapons. Because as long as you have the development points to spend on it per level, you can advance in it. So you can make your ranger... Um, be very proficient in weapons and halfway decent on like your stocking and hunting and all that or you can make him just really really good with like the broadsword or the longbow and you know good you know honey now I, I wanted to say this because it's, this is kind of funny to me in D&D and &D in the clones they have subclasses and one of the subclasses for a ranger is a beastmaster. This allows your ranger to have an animal friend with a basically kind of like a familiar. In Rollmaster, we have a profession called Beastmaster, which is very, very similar to the old movie series of Beastmasters. And so, you know. The Beastmaster is its own profession. The Ranger is its own profession. And the Druid is obviously their own profession. And so each one has specific spell lists because for like the Beastmaster, it has spell lists on how to become uh, bonded with an animal of any type of animal. How to speak with and everything. And so... It's what makes, you know, Rollmaster better than D&D. So anyway, I think I've talked long enough on this video. So everybody, please take care. Be at peace.